going to look at the color of distance when we're painting. Specifically, we want to look at not just copying what the photograph gives us, because that's not always real reliable. Photographs can get too dark in the distance, uh, not show enough color temperature for things to recede, but we want to be able to mix colors that we need to show as much distance as we want in the uh, painting. We're going to be uh, talking about the color of depth or distance in our painting. What we need to do to make our painting look like there's depth. That trees, hills, houses, whatever it is in the painting that goes back in the distance, they have to look like they're receding. And it's a lot more than just copying the photograph, because a lot of times photographs don't have the correct temperature, and a lot of times not even the correct value. So we want to be able to think in terms of what color depth is, what happens to colors and objects in the distance, color-wise, value-wise, and intensity-wise, those three things. And we know colors get lighter as they go back, or objects get lighter, colors get cooler, and colors also get more muted as they recede. But how much we do all that depends upon the artist. And I can pop these colors in the distance, like in this photograph, a lot stronger than back in. It doesn't have to be this muted of a blue that we see here or back in here. I can make a stronger color and it can still recede if there's a difference between the background colors and the foreground colors in intensity. And making sure this is a lot cooler compared to the foreground. So it's not a matter of mi mixing this. I have to get the right relationship between the background colors and values and intensity compared to the foreground. And there are certain colors that we want to think about in the depth, in the distance, no matter what the photograph shows us. Colors that will work. That I might not want to use blue-violet back in here or blue-green. I might want a red-violet back in here. It might give me more contrasting color instead of everything being green. A red-violet would give the painting a bit more punch. So again, photographs just a starting place. So, seen in California. Compositionally, I want to first crop it to see how I can zoom in. It's a good, good composition somewhat as it is, but you can't rearrange stuff before you take the photograph. You look at it, you find a good composition, knowing that when you get it back, you can rearrange the composition in a thumbnail drawing or several thumbnail drawings and or on the computer. So on the computer, I know I can at least crop it. When I look at this, I can cut down on some of the sky and some of the foreground. So about right in here, this gives me everything I'm really interested in. This is what I'm really interested in. So getting rid of some of the surrounding stuff, the stuff that's on the peripheral of the photograph. Now I've zoomed in. The things that are more important are bigger now. And then I can look at shapes. And all the weight is on this left side. It's too heavy. This yellow tree, the largest dark tree. Horse isn't over there, but it's close to being over there. If the horse was way over here in front, that might balance it off a bit more. Or putting a little bit of a roof of a barn back in the background. I wouldn't want a barn or a horse or anything on the same level as this yellow green tree. It just becomes static. So probably a, a barn or a roof, something in the background, or a horse back in the background, or a horse way up front on this side, but I don't want it on the same level. Or what I can do is just move this tree. If I take this tree out and I put it back in the background, a little smaller, that's going to balance the painting off a little bit more too. So I did that. Using Photoshop, all I did was pick up some of this color. Uh, not literally, I just used the painting aspect of Photoshop and, and tried to get that same color. And it's not, you know, I don't want to try and make up too much stuff, then there's no point in even taking the photograph. But I can reproduce some of the light and shadow on this tree and just put it in here where the yellow tree was. And I pushed the yellow tree back. I, I rendered it with the same lighting that's in these trees. Kind of uh, backlit with the sun coming in front, down on top a little bit. And I would probably, but I'm not, I'm not going to redraw that horse in Photoshop because that would be a disaster. I would probably stick the horse somewhere in here in the background. 
because the, the horse, the tree, they're not the focal point. The focal point's the depth. And again, just picking up some of the colors in the grass, filling in in there. And this is what I'm going to work with. I don't know about the horse yet, but I'm going to render that or get another one. We'll see. What I do want to focus on, though, is the uh, depth in the background. Now, looking at some other images, this is a photograph near Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And you can see the depth. There's also, it's a little smoky because there's a fire, I don't know, a few hundred miles away, but it still affected the atmosphere. But I think because of the smoke, it, it, it gave me more of, of an atmospheric feel in there. So same thing here. When I look at this, I first want to realize that not all of this is important. A third of the painting here is sky, and I definitely don't want a third to be sky, and I don't want the other third to be foreground. And a lot of times it takes me three or four different croppings to figure out what I want exactly, which is what, what's the nice thing about using the computer, is that, you know, it's so forgiving with mistakes. Now, to me, that's a lot better composition. The trees, the hills, the barns are a lot bigger, and we've gotten rid of most of the surrounding stuff that doesn't matter as much in the composition. And also, what we have here, when we have the depth, you want to count layers. So if I have a foreground layer right in here, then I have more of the background layer of dark here. And then the layers here stick out fairly easily. They're not always, they don't, don't always jump out at you this separated. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and I might get rid of some of these six, maybe seven, a little point up in there. And this is fairly easy to, to see in the photograph. A lot of times it isn't, so you have to kind of group things together, separate them, and, and force them into, you know, two or three or four different layers to create some distance back in there. Then I want to be real conscious as I make this dark, dark, that it has to be lighter than this dark, but yet I still have one, two, three, four, five more layers of gradually getting lighter. So until I get all these layers in and then adjust them, I'm not going to know what value works. And painting is always just a series of adjustments. After I get the shapes in, most of the time in the painting is spent adjusting the values. It's not coming up with the best technique or uh, best color. It's adjusting value. So a couple of more here. This is another one. And this one is pretty clear cut too. The levels, again, if I were to look at this, I'm not that interested in the background, not that interested in this area over there, over on the left side. Again, it's more right in here. And I can even do more of a square. I think a square would work a little better here than a vertical or a long horizontal. Although a long horizontal would work. I probably have about two or three paintings here in this one photograph. And looking at the tree here, shape-wise, I could even get that a little bigger, lift up some of these more important trees. And you can do a lot with the images here. Make the trees bigger. The camera tends to push things back and spread them apart a little bit further. Or I could leave the trees the size they are. I think it would work. But there's a lot of options as opposed to just taking the photograph as you get it. And too often we do that. We just pick out a photograph, set it there, and just start copying. Think about how to make it a better composition, different size that might work better. And think about how many paintings you can get out of one photograph. A really good photograph can give you two to three paintings out of it, just by changing the shape of the canvas. Now this is in California also. I don't need this much tree on the left, grouping of trees don't need that much sky. I do like the foreground and the background. And again, I can zoom in closer just for a separate painting, but that has everything in there that I like about the photograph. This has way too much. So always consider cropping, zooming in. A lot of weight on the left side, left side to center. So having one of these trees back in here, balance it off. Or up in front, a shrubbery. A little bit darker because you don't want equal weight on both sides. Most of the mass is going to be on one side or the other with one or two objects creating some balance in there. Also when you have mountains like this, these are straight across, a little static. I don't hesitate to maybe change the shape a little bit. And I'm never really painting a portrait of an area. For me it's more just painting for painting's sake. I might want to lift it up on this side a bit more. 
since I have the weight over there. But anyway, getting away from that straight line on both mountains and just have it a bit more varied. It's real easy when you have layers of mountains, like you have peak coming in here, then the ones in the background. You know, we can just put the same peak at the same, when you do that without thinking, and it just looks like one line on top of the other. So make sure you you vary the shapes quite a bit from foreground shapes to background shapes, because you can layer one on top of the other and, and just repeat the same shape. Now a couple of paintings here. This is a John Carlson. You can see the depth here, and his layers are real distinct. Whether he saw them that distinct or not, you've got the layer here of the foreground darks, background darks, and then each of these layers gets a little bit more muted. So he's, he's consciously got those layers set up, being very deliberate and making sure they're cooler and a little more muted as they recede. And you can tell the color of depth here, although he might be using more of a, a bluish gray, but everything sinks in to a cooler color. And it's a lot more muted, so he, he might have a bluish gray instead of just a strong blue violet to have these colors sink into. So starting in, in this area, he's adding a little bit of a muted blue or a blue violet to all these colors. So even the red trees, he's adding some blue violet to them to make them recede. A lot of times you can get, you mix up your the color of whatever you're going to use for your depth and put it down first then scrub the local color into it. So in other words, for these red, kind of red-orange trees, that's the color they are, and they would be a strong red-orange up front, but in the back you have the addition of the color of depth, which in this case would be a muted blue, muted blue-violet, or you could use a stronger blue or blue-violet. But I can get the right value of blue or blue-violet back in here, and then just scrub the orange into it. And that makes it sink back into it. Also gives me more broken color if I mix right on the canvas. If I mix all these right on the palette, they can they tend to get a little flatter. But all the mixtures back in here that he's mixing and putting down for the distant hills has the addition of the color of depth in there, whatever he's using for that. Some kind of cooler, more muted color. And very conscious of that. And in the photograph, we tend to just look at the area we're going to mix, and we don't consider how far back it is and how much more we have to push it. So really think about how you have to alter things. Now this is an Eldro Hibbard, painted the same time period as Carlson. And this is winter also, and there's a lot less color. You know, the bare trees are just kind of a red-violet up front, darker violet back in here, and then just a real light blue-violet here, and then a blue in the distance. So the red just drops out. But you can see there's less and less detail as the layers of mountains and trees go back. The big thing is less detail, but also, of course, the values get lighter and a lot cooler. There might be some yellow in here, hardly any if, if any at all in here, and then the red even drops out way back in there so that it's uh, almost more of an intense blue back in the distance. So think in terms of how we can improve on the painting compositionally, and think through the layers of planes as they recede and how intense you want to get the color.